everyone welcome back to my channel this is Heidi from my reading life and I'm here today to film a book tag video yes I know I very rarely film book tags anymore I do enjoy them but I just can't seem to fit them in to my schedule but I really wanted to do this one because it is nonfiction November and this is the nonfiction November book tag so this was originally created by bookish travels and I was tagged by book chat with Pat and I will link both of those channels down below and there are nine questions and let's just get to it this is the day before Thanksgiving I took the day off from work so that I could be fully in my um, prep for turkey day mode I am in the middle of like baking and prepping and all that sort of thing so thought I'd take a minute and just do this book tag and talk about nonfiction, which I love. So the first question is, what motivated you to pick up your first nonfiction book and can you remember it? I don't know what my motivation was, but I know that I have always loved nonfiction. As a, from a young age, I was drawn to nonfiction. I like to learn about things that I don't know anything about and I prefer to do that through reading rather than other forms of learning about stuff. I do have, I don't know if this is the first non -book, nonfiction book that I like brought into my library myself, but this is Frosty, A Raccoon to Remember by Harriet E. Weaver. And this exemplifies the type of nonfiction that I was really drawn to when I was a child. Animal nonfiction. <laughs> True stories about animals were it for me. Um, and this uh, was a book that I believe the library was, the library at my elementary school was like getting rid of because there are other children's names in the front cover and then my name um Heidi P <laughs> written in cursive right there um to denote that this is now my book and this is uh, I vaguely remember this book about a family that adopts a raccoon um, and the shenanigans that that raccoon gets up to. But this was the type of nonfiction that I really, really enjoyed as a young person. Um, and I, you know, I read everything in my <laughs> school's library at the time. I remember we had to do, I was in probably like sixth or seventh grade. Um, we had to do a book report. Uh, we could pick any book that we wanted to in the library, but it had to be a true, it had to be nonfiction. Um, and so I picked, um, Lee Iacocca's autobiography. <laughs> Lee Iacocca was at the time the general manager of Chrysler Auto. <laughs> was I did not care about automobiles, um, was not into mechanics, uh, didn't really care about business. Why would you pick that, Heidi? I don't know why I picked it, but I can very distinctly remember the cover, which was a picture of Lee Iacocca and reading that book and finding his life to be quite fascinating. Um, so yeah, I am not a person to um, discriminate in my nonfiction topics. I will read anything. Question two, how do you choose your next nonfiction read? So I am a person that likes uh, a lot of structure in my reading. I'm not particularly a mood reader. I do, I participate in a lot of buddy reads and themed reading events. Um, I co-host the book Naturalist Book Club where we read a lot of nonfiction, nature writing nonfiction specifically. Um, I participate in the BookTube Prize. I only read in the nonfiction category. So um, many of my buddy reads are nonfiction. I have several different individuals that I buddy read with almost exclusively nonfiction books. Um, and then I have my personal projects like my presidential reading challenge where I'm reading a presidential biography for each president in chronological order. Um, so yeah, I am constantly picking up nonfiction books to read. And I um, also like to go down rabbit holes. Uh, so for example, I recently read the biography of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I then read a nonfiction book about polio because FDR had polio. And I'm currently reading No Ordinary Time, which is a nonfiction book about Eleanor and Franklin specifically during um, World War II. Um, and I will then read a biography of Eleanor herself. So, you know, you can see how it rolls, one book rolls to the next, um, whatever my interest is at the time. Um, so that's how I pick my next nonfiction read. Um, question three, do you take notes or annotate your nonfiction books? And yes, I do. Not always, but very often and often when I'm doing a buddy read. So 
I think a really good example of this is this book, um, The World Turned Upside Down, A History of the Chinese Cultural Revolution by Yang Zhisheng. Um, this is translated from the uh, Chinese by, um, hold on, let me get to the translated, Stacy Mosher and Guo Zhan. So I um, read this with uh, Joe Smith and... <laughs> You can see that I tab this, and these very colorful tabs denote this um, key that I use to mark things that I need to learn more about because I didn't understand them. Pink ones were for discussion, yellow ones were things that I had no idea about or were important facts that I thought we needed to know. Green was quotes that I wanted to remember, red was upsetting moments, and purple were funny moments. So I like really enjoyed doing this. This was a very um, complex and I would say difficult nonfiction book to read, very dense. Um, and this tabbing and annotating really helped me uh, get through the information and get more out of the information. But I pretty much tab, I t I'm a big fan of tabs. I like to use tabs. I also like to underline. I don't usually highlight in my books and I don't often write in my books, but underlining and tabbing Yes, I am totally for. Um, and I do take notes too. If I'm buddy reading with someone and I want to, you know, there's something that I want to talk more about in our check-in, I will make notes of it in my bullet journal. So yes, I do that as well. Question four, have you read a nonfiction book that challenged your beliefs and assumptions? I mean, pretty much all of them. <laughs> yes, all the time that happens to me. Um, one that really stands out in that regard is one of my very first Buddy Reads with um, my buddy reading nonfiction group, um, Patrice, Doris, and Karen. We read The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson, um, The Epic Story of America's Great Migration. And this is about the movement of Black Americans from the southern part of the United States to the north, um, particularly to the north, but also to California. Um, and obviously, Tab, this one as well. This is an excellent example of narrative nonfiction. Really awesome and really sort of opened my mind up to um, the period of history in the United States between Civil War and the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s and what was happening with the Black American population at that time um, and the responses to Jim Crow and um, the failure of restoration and all that sort of thing industrialization, lots of things happening in this time period. And it wasn't an era of American history that I knew a lot about. And I think the way that Isabel Wilk Wilkerson um, talks about history and is particularly about the experiences of black Americans is mind bending and will alter your um, understanding of American history. And this, this was sort of my launching off pad to many of the books that I have read since about the experience of black Americans in US history. So absolutely changed my way of thinking this book right here um, another one that i would say just recently read that changed my way of thinking was this book estrogen matters why taking hormones in menopause can improve and lengthen women's lives without raising the risk of breast cancer by avram blooming md and carol tavris phd and this is all about um, the mythologies around estrogen causing breast cancer or other diseases in women if estrogen is taken um, during menopause or an after menopause. And this outlines the science around what we currently know about estrogen in the female body. And um, I, this really informed me in a lot of ways about things that I did not know very much about. So definitely changed my perspective on estrogen. Okay, question five. How do you feel about the intersection of storytelling and factual content in nonfiction? Um, I like it in some ways and don't like it in other ways. So I, what I mean by that is I really enjoy narrative nonfiction, uh, like in general. And that is when a nonfiction author tells the story around a particular event or person in history. Um, it works really well with history, I think, but I just like that um, use of that type of storytelling that's very factual and very based in what actually happened or what we know about a particular topic. What I don't like is in memoir when somebody is writing their memoir and they write about events or actions that they took when they were a very young child, when it is obvious that they can't possibly know or remember 
what they were doing when they were three or four years old. Like, I just cannot, I do not like that. It throws me out of the story. It makes me question the veracity of the rest of the story. And I know memoir is about people's own memories and their own understanding of their own life story. And that's fine, but I don't like that in my nonfiction. I also do not like, um, what do they call it? Uh, creative nonfiction <laughs> or like basically inserting uh, fiction within a nonfiction book. Um, and there was a very popular book of um, that w came out a few years ago that did that. And I just, I just do not like that in my nonfiction. I like my nonfiction to be very based on facts or at least the facts as we know them right now, understanding of course that with further knowledge, we might change our minds about something um, or we might understand something differently. But when people are just like making up stories in the middle of their fiction, their nonfiction, like I just in general don't like that. Um, so like for narrative nonfiction, one of my favorite authors is um, Eric Larson. And my favorite Eric Larson to date is The Splendid and the Vile. And this is um, about Winston Churchill in World War II. And this is a great story, but it's all based on facts. And Eric Larson is really good at um, delving into primary documents, letters, journals, that sort of thing, and getting at how real people, like everyday people, experienced big events. Uh, and I think he does it very, very well in The Splendid and the Vile. So other types of authors, David Gran, David McCullough. Um, there was a book called American Fire by Monica Hess, which is an excellent example of narrative nonfiction um, that I particularly love. So yeah, those are some of my favorites. Um, number six, is there a topic you wish authors would explore? I mean, the depth and breadth of nonfiction that is available to us today is, I mean, it's like never ending and I will never read all the books that I want to read. So I would say the only thing that I would want to see more of is more nonfiction that looks at topics from the point of view of women or minorities. I think we're getting more and more of those types of books, things like Hidden Figures that talked about the women who um, basically were the basis of the space race. You know, they were the calculators. They they did all the math that allowed us um, to get into space um, and, you know, how that you know, that history from that point of view of these black women who were not recognized for their contributions until much later after the events had happened. I want more of those kind of stories. I want to hear about history from people that I've never heard that history before. I want to know what everyday people were doing during the course of great events. Um, that's the type of book that I like to read and I would love to see more of that. Um, Question seven, do you incorporate insights from nonfiction into your daily life? I mean, yes, all the time. Um, I am constantly learning new things and applying that knowledge to my everyday life. Um, particularly, uh, you know, the stuff I read about science that goes into my day job, the stuff that I read about history goes into my greater knowledge and understanding of how the word wor world works. I do read some few books that are more like productivity or like personal growth type books. I don't read a lot of that, but I do read some and those are like very directly influencing how I do things. Um, yeah, I would say what I read influences what I do all the time. I mean, all the time. <laughs> and then question eight is choose just one book from your nonfiction collection to highlight. And for that one, I picked one that I don't think I've talked about very much on the channel. And this is Seaweed Chronicles, A World at the Water's Edge by Susan Hand Shetterly. And this is one of those niche topic science books that I love. This is about seaweed and it's about what's going on in Maine with seaweed. And Susan Hand Shetterly um, is an excellent author that can tell a great story about really niche topics. Now, you would think seaweed not necessarily something you'd be interested in, but I would I would deny that that is the case. I think that this is a very interesting topic to explore. I think um, as we move into, you know, the state of the world as we are with climate change, seaweed is more and more important, not only as, you know, an ecosystem, because so many things depend upon seaweed for habitat and for um, something that they use within their life cycle, but we're also growing different seaweeds for food or for supplements. Um, and the book talks about all these different topics um, and talks about the importance of seaweed like in general in the ocean. Um, and it's just well done. And it's one of those topics like 
who knew that you needed a book about seaweed? Well, you do need a book about seaweed and you should read this one because it's really excellent. And then um, the question nine is to tag people. And I would just say, if you're watching this video, you are tagged. I would love to see your responses to these questions. This is a great tag and a great way to highlight more of the nonfiction that you've been reading. Um, I'm always excited to talk about nonfiction. It is my favorite genre <laughs> to read, obviously. Um, and I always want to hear about more new and interesting nonfiction that I have not yet read so that I can put it on my TBR and get to it at some point. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read. I'll talk to you later.